The following video presents the step-by-step -step techniques of the standard primary total knee replacement surgery. The patient is placed in the supine position. The tourniquet is well padded and placed on the thigh as high as possible. There is a rectangle positioner placed on the lateral side of the thigh, allowing the maintenance of the vertical position of the thigh when the knee is flexed. There is a small round positioner placed at the ankle of the non-operated extremity. Carefully mark the superior and inferior hole of the patella as well as the medial edge. Mark the point three fingers below the inferior pole of the patella that will be your lower end of the incision. Mark the point two fingers above the superior part of the patella, this will be the proximal end of your incision. Draw the incision line connecting the two points in the middle parapatellar line. Note that all the markings are done with the knee in extension. Flex the knee back to the 90 degrees and cover the operative area with iron foil. Carry the incision through the entire thickness of the skin in one smooth move. Then dissect the subcutaneous tissue until you reach the joint capsule. Enter the joint just medial to the patellar ligament and extend the incision down to the tibia. Invert the blade and carry the incision from the distal up on the tibia extending the incision by another 2 to 3 centimeters. Extend the incision proximally along the patella, split the vastus medialis muscle at the 45 degree angle. Then finish opening the joint. Use electrocautery to perform suprarosal elevation of the MCL. Use cab elevator to complete the supraosteal elevation. Extend the leg and reposition the rake retractor to expose the middle edge of the incised joint capsule. Remove the synovium from the middle aspect of the joint. Try to do it keeping the excised synovium in one piece. Place the Army Navy retractor right below the patella tendon. You may need to use a knife to perform a puncture if the retractor doesn't go in easily. Then partially remove the fat patch from the anterior aspect of the knee joint. Open the suprapatellar pouch with curved male scissors. We like to use the patellar clamp for a better grip to evert the patella. However, doing so, you must pay close attention not to tear the patellar tendon. Place the Richardson retractor in the suprapatellar pouch to clean the fat pad. Place the hormone retractor on the middle side of the femur protecting the MCL. Then remove the osteophyte on the medial side of the knee with the straight 3 quarter inch osteotome. Use the quarter inch curved osteotome to remove the osteophyte on the posterior medial femur. Switch the hormone retractor to the lateral side and remove the osteophyte as needed. 
use 3 quarter inch curved osteotome to open the femoral notch. Remove both cruciate ligaments. Carefully place the double angle Hohmann retractor behind the posterior aspect of the tibial surface and dislocate the knee joint forward. Remove the remnant of the anterior fat bed from the patellar tendon. Remove the lateral and then the medial meniscus. Position the tibial cutting guide. Position the top part on the tibial eminence and secure it with a pin. Slide the cutting guide against the bone. Align the long part of the guide with the tibial spine to ensure the horizontal cut as well as two fingers away from the bone at the level of the ankle joint to ensure the posterior slope. Use the angel wing to establish the thickness of the cut. Once the cutting guide is properly positioned, secure it with pins. Once the cutting guide is in place, remove the rest of the alignment guides. Cut and remove the tibial joint surface with the oscillating saw. Once the cut is completed, remove the cross pin and the cutting guide, leaving the two parallel pins in place. You will need them in case you need to recut the tibia lower. As you cut to the soft tissues in the posterior aspect of the knee, Make sure to point the blade of the knife down towards the cut tibial surface and not towards the back of the knee. Measure the size of a tibial base blade. That's very nice. Okay, let's take everything out. Remove all the retractors and extend the knee to check the tibial cut. With the knee in extension, insert the alignment rod. It should point to the second metatarsal bone. Remove the tibial sizer and check the gap between the cut tibia and the femoral joint surface. It should be approximately one centimeter. If it's less, then you need to recut the tibia lower. If the gap is sufficient, you can remove the remaining pins. That completes the tibial cut. We start the femoral cut with opening the femoral canal. We use it as the original alignment reference. Insert the femoral rod with the pre-attached anterior referencing base into the femoral canal. Align the referee space parallel to the tibia. 
and secure it with pins. Check the alignment by slightly lifting the femur. Attach the femoral cutting guide with the anterior femoral reference guide and adjust the height of the cut. Tighten the screws to secure the position of the cutting guide. Once the anterior cutting guide is in place, cut the anterior femur. Once the anterior cut is completed, place the 10 mm distal cutting guide and secure it with pins. Detach and remove the anterior cutting guide along with the base and the femoral alignment rod. Position the zero retractor to protect the patellar tendon. Use the 1 inch straight osteotome to protect the tibial surface and perform the distal cut of the lateral condyle. Reposition the zero tractor to the middle side to protect the MCL. Again, use the straight osteotome to protect the tibia and perform the cut to the middle condyle. As you cut, make sure that the cuts are straight as the blade has a tendency to bend away from the bone. Remove the cross pins and distal cutting guide. Leave the parallel pins in place in case you need to recut the distal femur. Okay, let's see, space. Extend the knee and check the gap. Check the middle lateral stability and make sure that you get a full extension. We check it for different sizes to establish the best fit. If the cut is sufficient, you can remove the remaining pins. Don't give me that last one again. Someone I just gave it up a cent. Measure the level of the posterior cut. Right. Size five, but it's not. Could be. So I cut it low. Size four, but it's not. Could be. So I cut it six on that one. Position the posterior and chamfer cutting block and secure it with pins.
protect the patellar tendon with the zeus fracture and perform the posterior cut of the lateral condyle. Insert the 1 inch thread osteotome to protect the tibia and perform the 45 degree cuts. Switch the zero retractor to the medial side to protect the MCL and perform the cuts on the medial condyle. Again, reposition the straight osteotome to perform the 45 degree cut on the medial condyle. Remove the zero retractor and the osteotome and complete the rest of the cuts. Once all the cuts are completed, remove the cutting block and all the pins. Use the laminar spreader to open the joint space. At first, insert the laminar spreader from the lateral side. This will give you an excellent access to the back of the medial aspect of the knee. Remove the remnants of the cruciate ligaments and the menisci. While removing the middle meniscus, be very careful not to damage the MCL. Use the three-quarter inch curved osteotome to remove the posterior osteophytes. Reposition the laminar spreader to the medial side and open again the joint space. This will give you an excellent access to the back of the lateral aspect of the knee. Remove the remnants of the lateral meniscus. Use the three-quarter inch curved osteotome to remove the posterior osteophytes from the lateral condyle. Okay. Once the posterior osteophytes and the remnants of the menisci are removed, you can remove the laminar spreader. Measure and compare the flexion and extension gaps. Check their stability in extension, full flexion and mid flexion. Also recheck if the extremity reaches full extension. Cut out the femoral notch. Position the center punch guide over the opening to the femoral canal. Secure it with pins. Protect the table surface with one inch straight osteotome and perform the cut with the oscillating saw. Chisel. 
perform the final cut with the chisel. Remove the center punch guide. Insert the femoral trial. Position the double angle Hohmann in a femoral notch and dislocate the tibia forward. Retract the patellar tendon with a Hohmann retractor. Position the tibial plate trial and secure it with pins. Position the guide and perform the table punch. Insert the trial spacer and reduce the knee joint. Check the stability and motion of the knee joint with the trial implants. We check it again in full extension, full flexion and mid flexion. Extend the knee and evert the patella. Attach the cocoa to the soft tissues on the middle edge of the patella to help with the eversion. Perform the lateral release as necessary. Place two sharp tower clips in the patellar tendon and the quadriceps muscle tendon for a better grip and stabilization of the patella during the cut. As necessary, use the rongeur to remove the osteophytes from the patella. We prefer to cut the patella with the free-handed cut, leaving about 10 mm of patella behind. Position and size the patellar drill guide and drill the holes. As we finish drilling the holes in the patella, we start mixing cement for the entire prosthesis. Apply the patella trial. Revert the patella and check the patella tracking. Once the alignment, stability and tracking are confirmed, 
remove all the trial implants. Irrigate the joint copiously with pulse lavas and dry it out. We use pressure suction tape for the cementing part of the procedure. Apply the cement to the femur and pre-pressurize it with your finger. Also add small amount of cement on the implant itself. Be careful not to use too much. Apply the femoral implant. Remove the excess of the cement using smooth forceps. Re-impact the prosthesis for the second time and then remove the axis of the cement. Place the double ankle home on a tractor in a femoral notch. This time protect the real implant with a gauze. Insert the fraser suction tip into the tibia punched hole and leave it there for the cement application. The vacuum will help to incorporate the cement into the bone structure. Apply the cement to the table surface and pre-pressurize it with your finger. Apply a small amount of cement to the table faceplate and insert the implant. Remove the excess of the cement with smooth forceps. Insert the spacer trial and reduce the knee. Irrigate and dry the patella. Place the coker on the middle aspect of the patella for the better grip. Apply the cement to the patella surface and pre-pressurize it with your finger. Apply the patella implant and press it with a clamp. Remove the excess of the cement with the smooth forceps. When the cement hardens, remove the polymer spacer and irrigate the joint. Place the double angle home on the tractor and dislocate the tibia forward. Remember to protect the femoral component with the gauze. Carefully inspect the area around the implant for any excess of the cement and remove it with quarter inch curved osteotome. Clean the table plate and apply the polymer component. Remove all the retractors and reduce the knee joint. Irrigate the joint and insert the drain. For the knee replacement, we like to use double drains. We close the joint capsule and the vastus medialis fascia with the number one vicar suture. 
we anchor the first figure of eight suture to align the angle of the vastus medialis cut. We close the fascia of the vastus medialis muscle with two layers of running suture. We close the rest of the joint capsule with a figure of eight interrupted sutures. Another number one. We use two ovicle inverted interrupted sutures for the subcutaneous closure. Then we follow with staples on the skin. 